An 800 million pound contract to upgrade the British Army's Challenger main battle tank was awarded to Rheinmetall BAE Systems Land on the 7th of May 2021 with the aim of producing the most lethal tank in Europe. The Challenger Award comes shortly after the government abandoned another armored vehicle upgrade project, the ill-starred Warrior Capability Sustainment Program in March 2021. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the Challenger 3 and the differences compared to its predecessor, the Challenger 2. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. The Challenger 3 will be the fourth tank of this name the first being the Second World War Cruiser Mark VIII Challenger, which was developed from the Cromwell tank chassis and armed with a QF 17-pounder gun. The second was the Gulf War-era Challenger 1, which was the British Army's main battle tank from the early 1980s to the mid-1990s when it was succeeded by the Challenger 2 which saw action following the Iraq War in 2003. The Challenger 2 main battle tank was state-of-the-art 25 years ago, but it definitely needed a new lease on life. The biggest problem of the Challenger 2 was that it used rifled gun barrels. Rifled barrels produced more friction for the munitions and reduced the power of the round fired. Britain was the last country in NATO to have rifled gun barrels. Now, 148 of the 227 Challenger 2s will be upgraded to Challenger 3s by 2030, and the first delivery of 18 tanks will be handed over to the military in 2027. The remaining Challenger 2s, the Challenger 3 will now have an all-new turret as well as the new L55A1 120mm smoothbore gun from Rheinmetall that will allow it to use all modern ordnance. The smoothbore gun has a longer barrel and a higher chamber pressure, so the round fired will leave the barrel with more speed. That added punch will make it more deadly on the battlefield. The higher chamber pressures associated with the L55A1 will allow Challenger 3 to fire newer ammunition types, such as armor-piercing discarding Sabo, DM-33, DM-43, DM-53 kinetic energy penetrator, and a DM-63. The second armament consists of one coaxial 7.62mm L8A2 machine gun, which is mounted to the left of the main armament, and a 7.62mm L37A2 machine gun that can be mounted at the commander's cupola. At each side of the front of the turret are two blocks of five 66mm smoke grenade dischargers. Its all-new turret can also be fitted to the tanks of allies and global partners. In terms of weight, the Challenger 2 and 3 are similar with the newer model weighing in at 66 tones, just one tone more than its previous iteration. Both tanks are the same size, intended for four-man crews, the traditional setup of a commander, a gunner, a loader, and a driver. One of the most obvious upgrades on display is the tank's available sighting systems. Challenger 2 only had a single thermal imager, whereas its more modern counterpart will have two independent new thermal imagers and fully integrated automatic target tracking, wide area search, and assisted target detection with full day and night all-weather capability. It will also have a new driver's sight with front and rear thermal imager cameras. The turret and hull incorporate second-generation Chobham armor over the frontal arc for increased battlefield survivability. The Army mentions a new modular armor, which, given that the adoption of the L55A1 gun will have required the redesign of the hull and turret ammunition stowage, it is likely that the Challenger 3's new turret comes equipped with blowout panels to redirect the blast from any ammunition explosion away from the crew. Significant also is the addition of provisions for an active protection system. The Raphael Trophy Active Protection System was selected and has now moved into the next phase of trials. Developed by Raphael in response to successful anti-armor attacks, Trophy Active Protection System provides mature, combat-proven protection against rocket and missile threats and simultaneously locates the origin of the hostile fire for immediate response. The protective system works by way of the radar detecting and classifying incoming threats. The system tracks the threat computes intercept parameters, and transmits alerts to crew and battle management systems. If the threat poses danger, the system launches countermeasures to neutralize it away from the protected zone. Trophy is the only fully integrated, combat-proven active protection system in the world 
and has been installed on Israel Defense Forces Merkava tanks since 2010 and has also been installed on the Namer armored personnel carriers. It has been supplied to four U.S. Army Abrams main battle tank brigades and will soon be supplied to Germany for its Leopard main battle tanks. Trophy has made numerous combat interceptions with no injuries to crews or dismounted troops or damage to platforms since its first operational interception in 2011. It has accrued over 1 million operating hours, including 5,400 successful field tests, and is now under contract for serial production of over 1,800 systems. The Challenger 3 is also set to be much more mobile with the newest generation of hydrogas suspension and an upgraded CV-12-8A engine with improved cooling and adding up to a reduced through-life cost. Not only was Challenger 2 less mobile, operating the previous generation of hydrogas suspension, but it also has a noticeably higher through-life cost, being less efficient and more expensive to run. The Ministry of Defense says the new main battle tank will have a surprising top speed of 60 miles per hour and a cruising range of over 300 miles, compared to the Challenger 2's speed limit of around 37 miles per hour and cruising range of 340 miles. One of the most lauded changes is that the Challenger 3 tank will be fully digitized, with new features improving communication and data sharing with other vehicles, intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance assets, such as drones, during future deployments. It will have generic vehicle architecture, an open system, and new digital crew stations, compared to Challenger 2's point-to-point -point bespoke architecture and a closed system, which can lead to integration conflicts. Deputy Chief of the General Staff, Lieutenant General Chris Tickell, said that this greater data sharing capability will allow commanders to identify the enemy and move that information seamlessly to other platforms. The Challenger 1 has rightly been called the virility symbol of the British Army. Challenger is a development of the Centurion and Chieftain line, modified to produce the Shir Iran 2, originally planned for service with the Iranian forces. After the Iranian Revolution, the Shir Iran project was taken over by the British Army, and the end result was Challenger, later redesignated as Challenger 1. The main differences between Challenger 1 and its predecessor Chieftain is the engine, which is far more powerful, and the Chobam armor, which gives very high protection levels against anti-armor weapons. The Challenger 1 proved itself during Operation Desert Storm, where it recorded the longest distance kill of another tank, while the Chieftain held the line for NATO during much of the latter part of the Cold War. The Challenger 2 took over from Challenger 1 in 1998, and is an extensive redesign of the Challenger 1. While it entered the fray too late for Desert Storm, it served in the Balkans and during Operation Iraqi Freedom. To date, its service has been just as outstanding as its predecessors. In one incident during Operation Iraqi Freedom, a Challenger 2 took over 70 hits from rocket-propelled grenades. Another incident involved the tank being hit on its normally vulnerable underside with rocket-propelled grenades, and yet it still managed to drive back to base under its own power. While the press reported the latter incident as a failure, it should be noted that the tank kept its crew alive and was likely able to keep fighting. The Challenger 3 is great news for the British military. Since the war in Iraq, the British Army has endured many pointed questions and lived through numerous debates about the future of its overall defense strategy. There have been cuts to personnel and failed armored vehicles, so the Challenger 3 will be a welcome addition. British strategy recently spoke of focusing more on space, cyber, and artificial intelligence. But military planners have realized the country still needs conventional armored firepower to keep up with what competitors, such as Russia, are fielding, namely the T-14 Armada main battle tank. The upgrades are planned to keep Challenger 3 in service until at least 2040, by which time a potential replacement in the shape of the Franco-German Main Ground Combat System program is planned to have reached full operational capability. What do you think of the Challenger 3? Are there any other feats of engineering you'd like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. Thanks for watching.